Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Tomasz and today we will talk about what is shape in ballroom dancing. Before we start talking about the shape, I have two announcements. So number one, please remember that our discount on international dance shoes is still valid until the end of the month of June 2021. So if you want a discount for your shoes, it will be in the description below. And two, we are releasing weekly ballroom online technique class on which we go deeply into the ballroom technique, the quality of dancing and body mechanics. So feel free to check it out. The link will be in the description below. Back to today's subject. Now, what is shape? Shape physically is the alignment and position of your body doing any step, any movement. If we want to, we would be able to discuss the body shape only by sitting on a chair, but I prefer to actually be on two legs. In general, body shape consists of three major points. Number one, it's a body rotation. Number two, it's body sway. And number three, it's the poise and extension of your body. So please keep in mind that we are pretty much discussing today everything that is from hips up. Body shape is a very popular, but also very misunderstood subject, especially in the beginning of a dance journey. Why? Because people tend to concentrate on the shape away from your partner and think that that's the only point in the body shape that we can make. And it's very important, like I said in the beginning, that the body shape consists of all three points at any given time. Okay, so let's go to point number one, which is the body rotation. Now, body rotation is one of the most fundamental ballroom actions, without which we wouldn't be really able to dance, even ourselves, not even going to the couple. Now, body rotation allows us to, first of all, change direction, so we don't only have to go forward or backward. Second, it allows us to create some volume in the couple. And number three, it makes us look free and moving rather than stiff and square, right? So if I have no body rotation and I just do a few steps forward and backward, and I have all the time my shoulders aligned with my hips, with my feet, it will look very stiff. The moment I allow my shoulders and ribcage to turn freely around my spine with my feet fixed on the floor, it will create already certain degree of shape. So especially in tango where we have really not much sway, if we add body rotation, which is very important to have it, that picture always will look like it has more volume, more three-dimensionality, rather than that picture that just looks square and stiff. Few important points about body rotation. Number one, we need absolutely perfect posture in order to execute body rotation correctly and feel the freedom that it gives us in our bodies. If at any moment your posture will be misaligned, chest dropped, and the spine will not be perfectly aligned, it won't be too easy for you to turn your chest around the spine. Next important point, as much in the body rotation, we really have to concentrate about our chest. You will see that when I turn my chest, my hips will also be responding to that. So I don't want to keep my hips fixed and just turn the chest and shoulders, because again, that will look stiff. I don't want to initiate the turn in the hips as well, but I will not restrict my hips just because I want to turn my chest more. So a very good exercise would be to stand on two feet, relax the knees, try to keep your hips steady, hold your rib cage with two hands and very freely feel that you can rotate your body from one side to another. And it should be very free very effortless and relaxed movement. So we don't want to necessarily control it too much at this moment. We don't want to tense our body. We want to just let it turn around our body, but your feet have to be fixed on the floor. And the last important point with the body rotation is that you should really try to pay attention whether it's your chest that is turning or your arms. Because very often, especially in the beginning, we feel that something is rotating but it's very often our arms that are moving around rather than our chest is moving around. So now let's go to point number two, which is a body sway. Now body sway 
is the curvature of your spine in relation to the floor. So that's when your rib cage has to sway it sideways and allow the arms to go with it. Because if we do the sway without movement of the arms, that will be poised, which is point number three. So in sway, what is very important to remember that we still need to be balanced over our legs. So for example, if I sway and my body is almost entirely outside of my base of support, you might say that you're not on balance. Remember that when we do sway, we also want to be able to do at the same time every other ballroom action. So we want to still be able to lower, we want to be able to still rotate, we want to be able to move, of course. All those things are happening at the same time. So it's a very bad idea to compromise big sway in favor of not doing anything else with your body. Few important points about sway. Number one, that sway has to be evenly spread through your whole spine. So whether you're swaying left or right, it doesn't really matter, but you cannot just, for example, either sway the head or just break completely just the chest without really following the line of the, uh, of the head. So it's the whole spine that will be curving left or right. So that will be sway right and that will be sway left. As a simple exercise, you should try to just do the sway in separation from every other action. Because it's very easy to do the sway and some turn. Sway and some extension. Sway and something else. But it's super important to be able just to do the sway as simple as it is in a side plane. Now, second important point is that we should try to avoid moving our head outside of our base of support, which are our feet and the space in between. So if I create a sway to the left at this moment, I should try to avoid moving my head too far, so now my head is falling outside of my base of support. To do that, I will have to create the curve that is not just going one way or the other, but instead it's curving through my entire body. So if I'm swaying to the left, my ribcage will move slightly to the right and my head will counterbalance slightly to the left. It's not like everything will be going to the left or everything will be going to the right. So in simple example, by the sway to the left, that's what will happen. And with the sway to the right, that's what will happen. And the last point, and probably one of the more important points about the sway, is the amount of sway is related to the amount of movement we create, which means the more movement, the more speed, the more space we take on the floor, the bigger sway we need. It is not a rule that we should, at every single moment, try to use the maximum sway we can, because that doesn't work like that. We need to first develop the speed, we need to develop the rotation, we need to develop the drive action, and only after the speed we created, we can use the sway to decelerate our body to prepare us for the next figure. Let's go to point number three, which is poise. Poise is the position we set up when we start the dance. So it's a position with zero rotation and zero sway as a given, which means our arms will be parallel to the floor, and if I stand sideways, we'll be exactly square with the turn. So I won't be favoring my left side forward, I won't be favoring my right side forward. In the same way, I won't have my right arm higher or my left arm higher. So it's just the position we start with, and let's call it a neutral position or position zero. In that position zero, we don't want to be just flat. Let's call it flat. So what we want to do is we want to have two curvatures at any given time. One curvature will be a side curvature, which means that I'm imagining that somebody's pulling me by my left hand and I'm creating a very slight curve to my left. And it will be always to the left for both me and my partner. So that's not something that we create for each other, that's something that we create ourselves. And it cannot be really either led or followed. The second curve we create is the back curve, which means pretty much from the rib cage up we're trying to create a very slight curve, of course, depending whether you're leader or follower, but we're trying to create a very slight curve to physically 
gain the volume in the couple. Now the amount of back curve strictly relates to your height difference in the couple, your personal capabilities, flexibility and strength. So don't think that the bigger the better. And remember you have to again be able to create all the other actions during that curve, especially as a follower. So you have to be able to lower to your maximum, rise to your maximum, you have to be able to rotate your body fully, you have to be able to move and drive across the floor, which means that you have to be smart in picking, uh, I wouldn't say maybe easy size of curve or easy amount of curve, but the one that you can actually maintain during all those things. The last thing you want to do is to create the back curve that is so big that it prevents you from driving to your maximum or from lowering to your maximum or from turning to your maximum. To sum up, at any given moment, you have to be in some body shape. In some moments, you will have sway and extension or, or poise and no rotation. In some moments, you will have only the rotation but no sway. In general, poise should be with you at all times, no matter what you do. So in a simple example of a contra check, we have to find that the contra check consists of all those three things. So if we do a contra check, we have slight sway, we have body rotation, and we can have poise and extension of the body line. And you should be able to go through every figure, especially the line figures like that, and find how much body rotation you need, how much sway do you need, and how much poise you can create to still be on balance, not to disturb your partner, and to be able to get out of it and carry on your dancing freely. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out our online technique classes. If you have any questions, please put them in the description below. If you like the video, hit the like button. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.